As COVID-19 cases continue to climb in Arkansas, summer camps are weighing whether it's worth it to stay open. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Craig O'Neill and THB 11's Melissa Zigowitz spoke with a camp director and a local mom about what they're doing to ensure kids stay safe as the pandemic ramps up. If I feel like uh, she'll be safe next week, I will let her go. Dawn Adams is preparing to send her daughter off to a summer camp in Oklahoma next week after canceling her original trip last month because a counselor tested positive for COVID-19. We got an email literally the night before. We were completely packed. She is currently struggling on whether sending her is the right thing to do. After hearing Camp Ozark in Mount Ida is shutting its doors after multiple campers and staff tested positive. It's a hard decision because because you want to allow your children to be happy and healthy and social. She is in contact with the camp to make sure no one has tested positive since. I do trust that they're doing everything that they can to keep the kids safe, especially since they had a, a, a case a few weeks ago. We have had some parents who originally registered their kids and then changed their mind. David Cox is the director of Lutheran Camp on Petty Jean Mountain, where so far no one has tested positive. It's a small camp to start with, but our registration is way down. Each session has less than 30 kids, and the camp is strict about following the social distancing guidelines. Kids wear masks most of the time. So does it worry you that a camp here in Arkansas is seeing cases of COVID-19? It does, yeah. So. Uh, we one of our sister camps in Texas also had to shut down because of that. But with cases not slowing down in Arkansas, Cox is watching the numbers closely until camp comes to an end at the end of the month. So if we had been able to foresee how many cases there would be, I'm not sure we would have gone ahead and had camp. In Little Rock, Melissa Zigowitz, THV 11 News. Well, there were 734 new cases of the virus reported in Arkansas today. That's 475 more than yesterday. And four more people have died due to the complica uh, complications from COVID-19, bringing the state's total to 305. When asked where he thinks these cases are coming from, Governor Hutchinson said it's nearly impossible to tell. Have you wanted to ask Governor Hutchinson your own questions during this pandemic? We want to help get your questions directly to him. Tomorrow night, we're hosting a conversation with the governor on 630 Central with Dawn Scott. The governor will join us for the whole show to answer questions about the state's response to COVID-19, mask mandates, education, and more. If you have something you would like to ask, text your questions to 501-376-1111. Again, that's 501-376-1111. We'll take as many questions as we can. It's a warm and sticky night around central Arkansas. As we take a look at the radar, it is all quiet. We did have some showers out there earlier, but with that loss of daytime heating, those showers have fizzled out. Temperatures upper 70s to lower 80s. But look what's happening in Nebraska. We've got a storm cluster that is swirling its way through that part of the country, and that cluster of storms is headed in our direction. So tomorrow we are looking at the potential of scattered showers and storms primarily going into the afternoon hours. Temperatures warming up to the upper 80s to lower 90s. The best chance of showers and storms will be for northern and northwestern parts of the state lesser chance for southwestern parts of the state, but we do have the potential there could be some strong storms. Main concerns, gusty winds, frequent cloud to ground lightning, and also heavy rain. And this is just the start of what could be many showers and storm clusters moving through. I'll have more on that forecast coming up. Coronavirus testing across the state is down, leading to lower case numbers. But now the message is clear from the governor and the Department of Health. Let's get back to testing. TCV 11's Roly Hoyt checks in on that effort. As you can see, the demand is there and the concerns are high for the people who are driving through. But when they're done, they often say how convenient it is. That's a message that organizers hope gets out and spreads a little faster than the virus right now. Okay, let's each nostril, okay? Okay, you want the short ones? Yes. For many, a welcome surprise as they roll up to a free testing clinic at a retirement village in Hot Springs. Much easier than I thought. I'd heard that they take this long one and go back into your sinus cavity, but very simple. The response has been, been really good. People have been really positive about it and, you know, interested to find out what their status is. 
Jeffrey Slatten is overseeing this site for the medical nonprofit Healthy Connections. In Little Rock, a similar free testing site at a Walgreens drew hundreds first thing in the morning. As cases grow, people seeking tests have gone from curious to concerned. In the beginning, I think it was people that were just interested um, just to see what their status was. We're starting to see more people who maybe don't have symptoms but feel like they may have been exposed somewhere. A few people here also need a test to plan the next few weeks. Tested once about three or four weeks ago and uh, I'm going to go visit my grandchildren soon and I want to make sure I'm safe. Slatten says supplies are good, at least for his group. They're prepared to do about 600 tests a week as they go around the state. Today we'll see about 200 people. A surge will make things tight but manageable, enough to ease fears for those worried about the inconvenience. It doesn't appear that this is going away anytime soon, so I would expect we'll be able to keep going. After this crew is done here, they'll head to Malvern in Hot Spring County, one of the hottest virus spots in the state. Look for cases and test results to pick up in the weeks ahead. In Hot Springs, Rolly Hoyt, THV 11 News. Among the many questions facing school districts, teachers, parents, and students ahead of the fall semester, will everyone be required to wear masks at school? There's no statewide directive to make them mandatory, but many school districts are looking into it and say it will be a team effort to get kids on board. Have to practice it and, and then teach the kids how to wear those and also and make it a fun game. You know, sometimes we have to be creative in order for us to uh, help those young ones to uh, keep that, uh, keep the face mask on. In Fayetteville, covering news where you the Fayetteville Board of Education meets next week to make a decision on masks. The pandemic has also brought on a new set of challenges for the state's court system. Saline County Circuit Judge Robert Hertzfield says he's done more than 100 hearings over Zoom. And while that's complicated, jury trials are a bigger concern. The suspension of in-person hearings has ended, but Judge Hertzfield says it is still not safe to go back to the courtroom. We're all breathing the same air over a period of hours, which is what we do in regular court. That is an extremely likely way to pass on the virus if somebody has. Some Arkansas judges have proposed using large event centers for hearings to be able to keep a safe distance. And some Arkansas inmates are serving their sentences outside jail walls thanks to the pandemic. The Washington County Jail is using an electronic monitoring program to track inmates via GPS. It's designed for offenders who pose a minimal risk to the community and offers the jail a chance to reduce inmate population during the pandemic. Sheriff Tim Helder describes the balancing act that the program presents. Again, ultimately, it's, it's a balancing act. We want to make sure that um, we can keep people off the floor and reduce our population. But on the other hand, I got to make sure that public safety is always at the forefront in this program. Each inmate is being reviewed to see if they qualify for the electronic monitoring program.